Hello, and welcome to the Washington, D.C. Comic, Science Fiction, and Fantasy Fans Fantastic Forum. I'm Ulysses Campbell, and we're really pleased to have you with us today. I'm going to introduce today's panelists. We have Mr. Ben Hatton, the lovely and fabulous Shireen Nicole, and the G.D. John Brooks, without whom any panel would not be complete. He's the linchpin. <laughs> Now today, uh, we're going to talk about politics and political portrayals in American comics. And uh, I just want to start it off being the old man of the group because uh, I can remember from way back in the way back um, seeing Richard Nixon in a Fantastic Four episode and he's like, Richards, let me make one thing perfectly clear. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, that, that has continued because, uh, well, gee, I guess the first time that they started showing political figures in comics was back in World War II. Right. They had FDR, who appeared regularly. Of course, what comic book in World War II would have been complete without Hitler getting his face smashed by Captain America or, or you know some other character like that. So I throw it out to you panelists. Um, politics and political portrayals in comics. I mean, you know, what, what have you seen? What do you think? I mean, of course, we've got the more recent uh, Barack the Barbarian you know, <laughs> you know, we were, in comics, I mean. We were you know. talking about that earlier, like, it's like, it's like everyone's jumping on this, it's like they're turning him, like, the, him, uh, Barack Obama, as our president into a gravy train to do, like, whatever they want with him. And, and I'm not quite sure, because before, when, like, you look at Marvel, you know, George Bush would be there, but he'd sort of be in the background, he was never really a character. And so that says something about everyone, like the writers love for Barack Obama, that he's always there. On the other hand, they also feel like they can do anything with him. Like Barack Obama and Ash from Army of Darkness teaming up. I think cover of Army of Darkness or Ash Saves Barack Obama number three is Ash with the chainsaw hand in the style of that Hope poster. So oh. like, you know, and so... I think that's an interesting thing, or Rob Layfield with Barack Obama with this gun. Of course, it has two whole barrel holes, so <laughs> pistol. He just, Did he have giant mammaries? No, no, that he was, was he was slim. <laughs> it kept him slim and fit. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not, because it sort of feels like, yeah, that's great, but it's also like he's not a celebrity. He's the president, you know, like. I think it has more to do with the fact that he has told people that he collects comics. So it's kind of... They want to show the connectedness to him, but the president is a comic book geek like the rest of us. I collect comics if you want to put a uh, likeness of me in anything. <laughs> yeah, Aren't you going to be in a comic right. but I, think, I think it also comes from the fact that people feel like Barack Obama is cool. Like, he's a cool president. Like, I, maybe even more so than Clinton, in, in a way, because... He, didn't he do a commercial for some late night show with, um, what's his name? Um, oh. Clinton or Barack Obama? No, Barack Obama just did one for this new TBS show with, what is the guy's name? He's Latin. He had a television show. He now has a, a late night show. Ah, forget George it. Lopez? George Lopez. Barack Obama go. did a commercial for George Lopez. Really? So Sad, because that guy's not funny. <laughs> no, but he did the commercial, and you got to think, and it's TBS, you got to think, you feel like you know Barack Obama, like he's this dude that you can kind of pal around with, and therefore people feel like, oh, he's the cool president, I'll make him into a superhero. Right. Uh, on the other hand, to have your president, like, punching zombies in the face, like... Oh, that's all good. I, mean, you know? I guess. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Because then, then you, that's how you get from health care to Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, when, when people feel like there's like so much that can be done and their imaginations about a person are so huge, you know, you can get comparisons like that, which are, if you have any logic, huh? 
Yeah. It's like comparing sandwiches and rattlesnakes. <laughs> you know, it's like, here's a yeah, sandwich. No, it's a <laughs> rattlesnake <laughs> when yeah. cooked. But I, I, so it, I think I agree with Ben. It can be dangerous in the public's perception and kind of levels of respect, maybe. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it, once you're in the public domain, and I, I was kind of dismayed at, you know, the way that uh, images, particularly of uh, you know, Sasha and Malia, have, have been used. I mean, right. you know, because they're just, I mean, these poor kids are sort of exploited now. But, yeah. I mean, it, this sort of goes to the heart of, you know, what we're talking about, though. Because, in, in fact, in Barack the Barbarian, I, I'm sure they chose that particular characterization because, you know, one of the characters that uh, President Obama mentioned was uh, Conan the Barbarian right. as being one of his favorites. So, you know, what's more natural than to see, you know, Barack the Barbarian with Sarah the Fighting Queen of the <laughs> North and uh, Cheney the Grim, right. I think it is, you know. Oh. <laughs> you see it all these other people who are showing up, uh, you know, of course, as the evil characters. <laughs> right. I mean, we've always had, like, you know, there's always been, like, political satire. There's always been those cartoon representations. I think it's interesting that this is the first time that you have a, a major political figure, like, starring in his own comic, doing his own stuff, mm -hmm. um, being such a supporting thing. You know, Spider-Man and Obama fist pump, like, bumping on, like, on the fr on the that issue. And that comic sold, like, wildfire. Did. My mother four, made me buy her four a Four-issue backup story. Yeah. I know. Four-page backup story. My mother called me. She's like, Shereen, I need the Barack Obama Spider-Man. I'm like, really? Okay. <laughs> and he had appeared before <laughs> in Thunderbolts. Right. With, like, no pomp or circumstance about it. But, but just because... Spider-Man. Just because that one Spider-Man... Yeah, well, Spider-Man's a much more popular yeah. character, yeah. you know. But, I mean, this kind of thing... I mean, and do you think part of it is because it's the, it's the presidency? I mean, because I remember... I mean, it seems like a lot of the time they have presidents or, you know, people who are running for president. I right. mean, I remember... Um, and it's another one, you know, me being the old guy of the group, you know, but back uh, in um, 1980 when uh, Ted Kennedy right. was challenging uh, Jimmy Carter for the Republican, um, 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 this is me, the Republican, doy, for the uh, Democratic nomination. And even though, you know, Carter was the sitting president, it's like, oh, what in the heck? But uh, I remember that's when you saw uh, a Senator Kelly appear in the X-Men and he was visiting the Hellfire Club, but it was, oh, presidential candidate, Senator Kelly. <laughs> and, you know, John Byrne drew this guy to look just like Ted Kennedy, Ted Kennedy exactly. Mm -hmm. And that was, and I, I was real dismayed at how Kelly sort of became a running character yeah. in the X-Men after that, because I'm like, no, wait, but it was Ted Kennedy. And he was actually kind of cool. Wasn't that know? who uh, Gary Shandling's playing in, uh, no, I was, I'm sorry, I'm going to say, Gary Shandling's playing some senator in, uh, in the new Iron Man movie, but I can't remember who it is. Oh, really? Oh, well, now that's, that's like a whole other thing. But you know, we are running out of time for this first segment. So uh, what we'll do, uh, we will pause and we will go to one of our other fabulous segments on this fabulous program. And uh, we'll be back in just a moment. So stay right here and don't go anywhere. and publisher Eric Larson. Mr. Larson, thank you so much for joining us today. It's really great to be here. <laughs> now, you were one of the people who was instrumental in the establishment of Image Comics, so, you know, one of the creators of that. That is true. You know, the problem with working at, at a Marvel Comics is that ultimately the toys you are playing with are not your toys. They belong to somebody else and you've got to put them away and not break them. Um, and we just wanted to break our toys. So, I mean, the, the, the cool thing about creating something on your own is that there is nobody who can say, I don't like the way that worked out. I don't think that's a good direction for the character. I don't think this direction will serve the company in the long term. I don't think the character would do that. And there, there were situations where there were guys who literally created characters and were being told by their editors, I don't think that character would do that, which is, what the hell are you talking about, you know? And, but, but that sort of thing happened all the time, where guys wanted to, to do things and they weren't allowed to do it because it served the company to maintain the status quo is what was going on with those characters. You had, you know, Jerry Siegel, who 
wrote Superman and created Superman who wanted to reveal, he wanted Superman to reveal to Lois Lane really early on that, that he was Superman and the, the powers that to be wouldn't let him do that. You know, um, at one point, Keith Giffen was told from editors over at DC that you know, Lobo wouldn't do that. And it's like, well, he created Lobo. I think he would have a pretty good idea of what he would and would not do. Um, and there's that sort of thing that has gone on over the over the years with these companies. And, it, and as fun as it was to work on Spider-Man and as much effort and time and energy that I put into Spider-Man, it could never be my character. And so in order for me to really be able to, to tell stories from a beginning, middle, and end and really have things work, I had to go and do that on my own. I could have done and created the characters at Marvel, but then the, then those characters would be owned by Marvel forever. And I didn't really want to do that. You know, it, it's sort of the, the, the stuff felt too personal and it just, I didn't think that it would serve me in the long term to be going and doing that. And I, you know, there were several other artists who felt in this similarly. And so we, we took it from there and we all left in mass to form our own company. Um, I think you're being a little modest because obviously an endeavor like this, all of you, in addition to having the incredible creative talent that you had, you had to be good business people also, wouldn't you say? Well, there is that. And we, we didn't know what the hell we were getting ourselves into to, to some extent. Um, but it was a leap of faith and, and we, we all felt, I guess, strongly enough that we would be able to survive and endure if things went bad. I mean, it was something of a risk because we were stepping off of, you know, the, the hottest books at Marvel Comics and that those books weren't necessarily going to be there for us if this all went to hell. Um, but, you know, we took a risk and it paid off. Well, what are you working on currently? I am currently working on this book called Savage Dragon, which I've been doing for the last 16 years. And I'm uh, right now penciling issue 142. And I anticipate doing a lot more. That's, that's fabulous. I mean, a little unusual, isn't it, for a creator to stick with a book as, as long as you've been with that one? Yes, yes. And it's pretty much unheard of uh, these days for where people will do a six issue arc and, and, and that's impressive, you know. Um, but there's, there's really nothing I would rather do. And, and it's been a blast doing it. And I get up every morning and I get to do whatever the hell I want to do every single day of my life. And it's a beautiful thing, man. Hello viewers, it's Ulysses Campbell coming to you with yet another edition of the Fantastic Forum Mailbag. Today's letter comes from Anwar Dixon and it says, what date and time does your show air in DC? Well, Anwar, the sad truth is, after being a uh, straight weekly for season number one, um, I ran out of money trying to produce episode <laughs> season number two. And uh, so I, I went through a whole lot to raise some money to be able to keep doing the show. And uh, we, we we're finally back on after a hiatus of about a year and a half. And um, now I, I, it's just the rigors of trying to produce as high a quality show as possible have prevented us from being able to put it on on a weekly basis, which means that uh, here at DC TV, uh, who is our station in Washington, we don't have a time slot, which is where people got accustomed to watching us back during the first season. So the best I can tell you is, uh, if you uh, check the Washington Informer, they publish a uh, guide for DC TV, Comcast channels 95 and 96, RCN channels 10 and 11, and uh, you can see when we're coming on. Um, you know, we, we run, episodes run a whole bunch of times during the course of a month. Uh, you can also look uh, at, um, let's see, at the DCTV website. Um, I believe it's um, dctvonline.tv. Uh, um, in any case, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you going through the difficulty. 
Um, if you miss it on DCTV, you can always tune in on the internet. Uh, and Access Montgomery also puts the shows on on their on-demand feature called View It Now. So, uh, you know, please feel free to uh, check out Access Montgomery's website and you can see us there also. And we're uh, uploading episodes to the net on the Fantastic Forum website at dcfantasticforum.com. So, thanks for watching and thanks for tuning in. segment on Fantastic Forum. Today we have more Marvel Legends action figures. You know how much I love these Marvel Legends. The Avengers is who we have arrayed before us today. And uh, the Avengers have always been one of my favorite superhero teams uh, in Marvel Comics. Uh, generally, uh, the Avengers was a collection of some of their individually more powerful characters and more popular ones, and they put them all together on a team. I guess the feeling being that you could really sell some comic books if you had a bunch of superheroes together, and it all seemed to work out. But um, moving along here, uh, the ones that we have represented are Ms. Marvel, also known as Warbird more recently, uh, a relatively new addition to the Avengers, Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, also known as Power Man. Uh, we have the great Captain America, the star-spangled Avenger, the living legend of World War II. Uh, also, we have the high-flying Falcon, a uh, former partner of Captain America, and a tremendous Avenger in his own right. A uh, relatively recent addition to the team, Spider-Woman, uh, with the new Avengers, but a uh, very dynamic addition. Uh, we also have the Vision. Um, he does not appear uh, like this any longer. Uh, this was the way that he appeared when he originally uh, appeared in the Avengers, uh, back during the, uh, the 60s. Synthesoid Avenger. Uh, we also have the Black Panther, uh, Shala, King of the Wakandas, uh, who was uh, African king and uh, head of the uh, Black Panther cult. Uh, we have Iron Man, uh, the Armored Avenger, uh, modern day knight who uses his technological skill and this fabulous armor he's created to battle evil. Uh, we also have the Mighty Thor, legendary Norse god of thunder, who is also a member of the Avengers. And uh, finally, Giant Man, uh, one of the uh, members of the original Avengers as Ant-Man. Uh, now the Giant Man figure is another one of these that uh, came with uh, one of the other figures. You know, they put an arm in one box, a leg in another box, a torso in a box. And uh, if you got enough of these other figures, you could build your own Giant Man. So these are among some of the best articulated figures that are around. Marvel Legends is uh, absolutely unmatched when it comes to the poses that you can get from these characters. And uh, they are absolutely among my all-time favorite comic book toys. The Marvel Legends Avengers. And we're back. Thanks for hanging around. I hope you enjoyed uh, the uh, uh, interesting filler between this meaty discussion segment that we have here. And uh, of course, I'm here with Ben and Shireen and the GD John Brooks, and we're talking about politics and political portrayals in American comics. So um, now, now where we, I, I had just mentioned Senator uh, Kelly. That's right. You know, and how uh, it seems as if a lot of these uh, political portrayals uh, frequently surround the executive branch or right. people who are connected to the executive branch. Judge Sotomayor fighting with Superman is going to be next. <laughs> That's what I'm expecting. I'm more likely she'll be in Blue Beetle. <laughs> what? More than likely she'll be in Blue Beetle. That's right. <laughs> so, yes. Plus, with Heidi. For one thing that I've seen in Marvel is they usually don't mention the government unless it's oppressing people. Right. <laughs> like mutants or superheroes. And it's well, kind of weird that they always kind of it's villainized, yet they're always standing up for it at the same time. 
because there's always this one plan that gets a lot of play that it's so ridiculous. It's just like, yes, we want to stop people from having kids. And this is like a bill that's been put up right. in the, for uh, California because that's where all the mutants went to. But Well, it's, it's interesting because I think the major, one of the major differences between DC and Marvel is how they use politics. Because DC does not have ever, um, in the last few years, any representations of real political figures. Well, that's true. They You've only, got Lex Luthor as president right, for they, creep's sake. Yeah. They only, and, like, and there's a freedom to that. Like, I forget, uh, not, wasn't, um, who, what is uh, the new Phantom girl's, Phantom Lady's name? Her oh, dad was the president. Knight. Senator Knight. Knight. Right, Senator Knight. He mm. becomes president, and then they kill him in the Uncle Sam storyline and replace him with um, oh, like an, an alien. Of, right. An yeah. alien. Was that in that miniseries yeah, that, that uh, Uncle Sam did? and the Freedom yeah, Party? That was, was really awesome. good. Yeah. And so I think by not having real political figures, there's a freedom that DC has to do with whatever they want to the executive branch, you know, Congress, whatever. But it makes them less sort of tied in with the reality. There's a certain, like, by having Obama president, by having, like, when we have, like, by adding things like, um, like, weird... Uh, Civil War is sort of was a state, was Mark Millar's statement on George Bush and what George Bush was doing in Iraq. And so there's a, a slightly more political commentary from Marvel, I think, than you ever get from D.C., but you know that that sort of because uh, I, I while you're sitting there talking about that, I was thinking about the fact that at one point superheroes uh, it seemed to I mean Marvel tried to make it sort of our world, right. but the way that people reacted to these characters was a lot different. And as time has gone on, I mean because let's face it, the way the comic books always worked, it was you know genres for a couple of years, you know, you know, Western comics are real popular, or they go through a period where war comics are real popular. And the superhero thing, that just took off and lasted for a whole bunch of years. Right. And so the way that the public has responded. I mean, at one time, you know, Mr. Fantastic go and shoot off the Fantastic Flare, and everybody's like, oh, you know. But as uh, superheroes proliferated, all of a sudden you started to have these storylines where, okay, well now we're going to use politics to regulate superheroes. We're going to have the Superhero Registration right. Act and, you know, stuff like that, where, you know, all of a sudden, well, wait a minute, you know, I guess these are natural outgrowths of you know, where it would all go. I mean, it sort of started out with stuff like damage control. Right. Where, okay, who cleans up after these you know, tremendous superhero battles? And, you know, the natural progression of this right. gets you to legislation dealing with superheroes. And, you know, stuff like, well, would superheroes run for political office right. and hold offices? You know, like how Tony Stark was um, Secretary of Defense for right. a time and Iron Man. Right. Yeah, definitely. And you really only, but you get that commentary more from Marvel than you do from, at least in the creation of this is our world with superheroes. I don't think DC really makes any claims to try to do that. They um, do deal with social issues, though. Yeah. But not with specific politics of the day. It's more like, you know, it might be, you know, abuse or you know, yeah. or yeah. the idea yeah. of war right. as opposed to like something specifically rooted uh, or grounded in in what's currently happening with real political figures. Right. Is that good or bad? It's just different to yeah. me. I mean, I mean, I think it's sort of like, if you look at it sort of like Captain America in the Ultimates, you know, drops into Afghanistan and kicks everybody's ass. Whereas Black Adam, which represents the same thing, the same sort of current fear of the Middle East leads Kandak. Or, you know, like, so it's still the same sort of thing. It's just what is more effective, I think, sort of like. And I think that's why some people like DC over, or Marvel over DC, because there is that sort of like, in the real, like, here more. I mean, DC jumped on the, the election bandwagon with uh, Decisions. Yeah, that was, was terrible. Yes, a miniseries devoted to Jericho as an assassin of the presidential candidates. And they were like, who is, and like, who is Superman going to, to side with this? Is he, is he blue or is he red? And superheroes coming out to endorse candidates for some reason, because I guess everyone has an opinion. Right. Mm. And they Not wouldn't really do necessary. that. And it was kind of in the back burner. 
and and I who wrote it? Winnick and yeah, Winnick wrote Willingham. it. Yeah, I, I think that's why no really? one cared. I think there's a both of them. Winnick and William? That's just weird. Yes, it is. And terrible. That's yeah. like, yeah, that doesn't even. I, okay. I mean, well, then anybody co-writes anything anyway. No. You know, that's kind of weird. <laughs> like, I well. mean, it's nice when you have someone like Green Arrow and Hawkman go at it. I love that political, de- like they're the political debate of the DC universe, yeah. you know? Well, wasn't Green Arrow a mayor of Star City at yeah. one point yeah. or something? Yeah. Run for, I mean, that was, you know, mm-hmm. the other thing. Shoot, I remember the old Adam West Batman where uh, Batman had to run for mayor because the Penguin was running for I, mayor. I remember. <laughs> 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 the Penguin. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Because that happens all the time. Yeah. It oh, well, does. They're... You just don't know because you well, only know sh- their, their secret it's identity. It's the storyline of Batman Returns. <laughs> yes, that's probably where they got it. Oh, God. So. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, politics, the use of politics is really to make us feel like we it's something else to connect with. I mean, but I think as comic fans, we stay away from com- from politics in our comics. Oh, well, sort of. We kind of latch on to this sometimes. Well, some people I hang out with because they mostly have government jobs. So politics factors in a lot in our conversations. But just to see it, and I think it's just more of a tool for the writers as something they can talk about or deal with to keep the book going along. Like in Thunderbolts, Norman Osborn gets appointed weirdly like head of Marvel's version of Homeland Security by George Bush as he's leaving. So now he has to prove his sanity to Barack Obama by staging an attack on him. It was just a nice story that they can use based yeah. with politics in it. I know, but on that note, it goes so fast. <laughs> um, you know, we have uh, reached the end of our time here on Fantastic Forum. I would like to thank our panelists and you for tuning in. Uh, Please come back uh, if you are interested in what you saw. Um, You can always visit us on the web. Uh, We are www.dcfantasticforum.com. And uh, I I personally would love to know what you think about this show. Uh, Give us some feedback. It's always appreciated. Tune in next time for another exciting episode of Fantastic Forum. Same bat time, same bat station.